Welcome everyone to the 2024 Photonic Spectra Summit Series. Thank you so much for attending the Integrated Photonic Summit. And in this session, you will hear from David Harami, the Chief Operating Officer for AIM Photonics. David earned his doctorate at Stanford University and is an Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers Fellow. Today, he'll provide an end-to-end -end approach to the challenges of pit packaging. If you have any questions or comments, you can type them right into the Summit chat box that is on your screen. And if you missed part of today's session, you can always come back later and watch it on demand. That's all for me. David, we appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Well, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to present this material today. I'm Dave Hermey, I'm COO of Infotonics, and I'm the uh, Vice President for uh, uh, Process Development and uh, at uh, our, our Photonics and uh, Test Assembly and Packaging Facilities. So uh, I'd like to talk about an end-to-end -end approach to the challenging in Photonic uh, Integrated Circuit Packaging. So first, let's take a look at some of the high-volume uh, Photonic applications. So probably the, the largest application by far is Datacom. And, uh, and especially uh, today, uh, there, there's a, uh, so much more increased activity in artificial intelligence. Uh, it's just driving data. Data is really everywhere. And uh, this is the largest application. And we'll spend a little bit of time talking about some of the packaging requirements and uh, our, uh, our conjecture that what we really need is a place where people can come and uh, really do innovation packaging and, and have a more accessible overall facility. So uh, there's some other applications that are uh, uh, high volume for photonics. There's LiDAR, uh, which is emerging. Uh, there's uh, uh, AR, VR. There's optical and quantum computing. And another uh, really expanding area is healthcare. So uh, for instance, photonic sensors are becoming quite uh, pervasive. And uh, this is showing you a photonic uh, sensor uh, that's uh, for biosensors, uh, uh, glucose, oxygen, but also particularly for COVID and uh, other viruses. There's, uh, we have uh, uh, several companies uh, within Infotonics that are actually developing these sensors. So many high volume applications emerging. <clears throat> so let's take a look at some of the uh, packaging requirements and aspects of Datacom, which is again the leading economic door, uh, driver for merging photonics and electronics. And what you see here is, is a little bit of the, uh, of the generational evolution of, of the data center switch. So in the upper left, uh, uh, that's really electronics, uh, stays on silicon, and uh, photonics is really through these pluggable optical uh, transceivers. So fibers are coming in, they convert it uh, to electrical, electrical to optical, and uh, that's really uh, the connection. And, and then you see the board, and uh, it's really uh, metal interconnections on the board. So uh, the next step in improving performance is, is really a packaging approach. And, uh, is to start integrating things to get you know, things closer to the switch and uh, to reduce the length of the electrical wire. So the first step for that is to take those uh, pluggable connectors and make them at least on board in, in, in the PC board or the, or, or the system board. The next step is to try and uh, move those onto the package. So this is a lot of uh, what's referred to as 2.5D co-package optics. Everything's uh, in a package. Uh, but it's still, you know, separate uh, discrete elements. So transceivers are, are are elements inside that package. But now the fiber is getting further from the outside, taking getting information closer and closer to the switch. Then, uh, and typically, uh, uh, you know, you, you can read a lot of uh, publications about the performance. Uh, uh, many people, like Broadcom, for instance, uh, they're doing 1,500 uh, terabit uh, per, per second uh, switch bandwidth with these kind of approaches. Now, in order to really increase the performance and get to the thousand terabit or petabyte level, and people don't really have a clear uh, path how to exactly achieve this performance, but there's so much data driving this that we really need to, a lot of innovation to do this. And it really is what's known as co-package optics, integrating things more and more tightly together. Uh, so uh, we're going to take a look at some of the aspects of this uh, co-package uh, development in the next slide. So here we're uh, taking a look at two aspects of, uh, of, of uh, photonics and electronics uh, for performance of these centers. And uh, what you see here moving from the chip all the way through the system is on the left is data transfer rate. And you can see this just a photonic is just, you know, very much uh, uh, faster data rates, uh, really uh, orders of magnitude. And, and, and similarly, if you take a look at uh, energy consumption, uh, picojoule per bit, it's the same thing. The photonic elements are really improving performance. They're just much uh, consuming much less energy. So you put these two things together, 
particularly your system level, this is the direction that you really want to go into. You want to bring the, the uh, photonics closer and closer into your system to take advantage of these great uh, uh, data rates and uh, improve product, uh, energy uh, consumption. Uh, what we're going to see, and uh, this is often known as co-package optics, Going back to that last slide, it really is integrating things in sort of 3D more closely together, and that's really packaging. So this improvement of performance is really all about packaging and uh, uh, getting into a, a, a more sustainable uh, kind of system. Uh, I, I, uh, yes. So let's take a look at the theme for this talk. So first, electronic packaging has reached a very high level of complexity and automation. There's a lot of discussion nowadays about advanced packaging, which is really kind of laying things out in tiled fashion, uh, sort of have chips uh, together, and at the same time, moving things up vertically and more vertically integrated. Uh, and, and advanced packaging separates itself from packaging. Packaging is really taking the chip and making it functional. Advanced packaging is really putting things together more on a system level where you're really improving system uh, uh, metrics like efficiency or reducing power or increasing performance. So photonic integrated circuits to, create, to package them to create functional optoelectronic systems, uh, they, they can't quite incorporate all the advances in the electronic packaging. Uh, world, uh, just because it's a lot more challenging, and we're going to go through what some of those challenges are. It, it's our contention in AIM Photonics that you really need to have all ends of the system. You need to design the pick custom uh, to the packaging uh, approach or flow. These things have to be designed together. And so you really need an end-to-end -end approach. You can't just have co-design where there's a foundry over here, and a packaging center over here, and they really aren't doing things together. And this talk is going to emphasize what kind of an ecosystem we have and give you some specific uh, examples for that. So first, where, what is AIM Photonics and uh, what are our facilities to do this? And uh, where are one of the, uh, the U.S. Department of Defense Manufacturing Innovation Institutes? We have three objectives. One is to advance uh, photonic integrated circuit uh, uh, and, and packaging manufacturing technology. So the focus is on manufacturing where we are to make this uh, technology accessible. And that's a key word is accessible. And then we need to create an, ad an adaptive integrated photonic circuit workforce. So we provide end-to-end -end photonics and packaging solutions. In the lower left-hand corner, you can see the Albany Nanotech facility. This is over 130,000 square feet of class one clean room. In the, in the, uh, in the, in the right-hand side, that same page is our Rochester, New York facility, our test assembly and packaging. This has 12,000 square feet of class 1,000 clean room. Nominally, it's more like uh, 100 today. So these are two very advanced facilities in, in which we're able to, on a 300 millimeter best in class photonics integrated circuit, develop this technology in this kind of an environment. I mean, uh, some of the tenants in that site, like uh, IBM is producing two nanometer sheet transistors, very reproducible, uh, very capable tool set. And we use that to advantage to really get low losses and repeatable silicon photonics. And then on the other side, there's the assembly part. And uh, here, uh, there's a different kind of facility, and we'll talk about what kind of uh, assembly operations you need to advance the electronic and photonic packaging. So co-design is critically important. It's important uh, to leverage existing electronic packaging assembly processes. You don't want to reinvent anything and, and, and really find ways to merge the photonic and, and, the, uh, and the electronic together. So by doing the co-process co co-design, you can take different structures and you can optimize those together with what kind of package you're going to have. And we'll show a couple of uh, specific examples of that. Standardization is really important in the industry. Uh, electronics is driven towards standardization. We're still uh, uh, far away from that in the uh, photonic side. So there's a big focus on uh, photonics. And again, our key areas are photonic integrated circuit, heterogeneous integration, test assembly and packaging, and, uh, and of course, uh, design automation to support it. This shows our, our uh, production uh, MPW technologies. And on the far left, left here, upper, upper left, you can see a full photonic integrated circuit technology. This is SOI based. And uh, you can see we have uh, active devices like modulators, photo detectors, and then we have passive waveguides and, uh, and, and couplers. In the center, uh, if you remove epi and implants, simplify, you can get what we call a passive process. And we also have one that's very 
optimized for low lock. Now, the significant thing about Amphitonics is we we will let people come in and do customization. So uh, we have something called Bite Size Custom. You can actually come in and change different aspects. And, uh, and, and, and we spend a lot of effort figuring out how, how people that come in, they may need a couple of things optimized to get to some kind of a product. And again, that product has to be packaged. And so we enable them to make uh, uh, changes in the uh, structures and the uh, materials in the uh, system. Let, let's take a look at electronic and photonic packaging. This is a slide borrowed from Peter O'Brien at Tyndall. And uh, what you see here is uh, there's a lot of, uh, of steps here involved in, uh, in photonic packaging. And there's mechanical, thermal, uh, uh, and you can see all the electrical packaging steps. These are just conventional standard electronic packaging steps. And it's important that you have these and they're part of your toolbox. Then there are a lot of steps that have to be optimized for the photonic or optical coupling. And as we look at this, we'll see today, there's a lot of activity here. And fundamentally, it's about connecting the optical signal, you know, and, and connecting it eventually to an, an electric system. And that is, uh, that that's the, the weak point, if you will, or the bottleneck, because it, 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 it's very sensitive to uh, very alignment, uh, very stringent alignment requirements, typically sub-micron. Uh, any kind of different materials with different indexes can uh, create more loss variations. It's uh, depending on how you package it. If you package it incorrectly, it could be very sensitive to thermal uh, variations in the package. You're typically integrating other components like isolators, lasers, et cetera, putting these together. And it requires custom testing that's very different uh, than the electronic system. So for all of these uh, different kind of reasons, uh, there, there are more challenges with uh, uh, photonic packaging. Now, we said the key part is just getting the signal on and off the chip, right? Or, or really coupling. And so what we've done here is, uh, is, is taken a survey of the different types of um, uh, optical coupling uh, methods. So one of the more common ones is the grading. We're going to take a look at that next. It's, uh, it has many advantages for simplicity, but you can see it has, it has a higher loss. If you look at edge coupling, it's capable of very low loss. It's, uh, I think a lot of people in the industry are moving in the direction of doing more edge coupling, but it takes, uh, it's more time intensive and takes uh, alignment time. Evanescent is a up and coming technique, uh, which uh, ha has lower losses, but takes a little more processing and structure. This, this is particularly uh, reliant on changing the process or co-process development. Micro lenses are a way of essentially expanding the optical mode, making the relief, relieving some of the uh, stringent alignment uh, tolerances. But at the same time, uh, it has its own aspects. It, it's very sensitive to angular. Uh, it has to be, uh, it also is somewhat time consuming in attaching the lenses. Although then it gets rid of fibers hanging off uh, the chip and it's, uh, it, it makes it easier uh, to couple to. Photonic wire bonds, this is an emerging technology where uh, we're able to uh, really 3D write a, uh, a waveguide, uh, and this has a, a pretty low loss, and, uh, but it does take the 3D printing aspect, and there's a lot of research today because it is really relaxing the alignment uh, requirements, and then there's free space uh, polymer technologies as well. Let's take a look at, uh, at one of the uh, techniques here, the couple under the chip. This is the grading. The gradings are, uh, well, they do have some uh, angular dependence. Uh, they have higher losses. They're polarization sensitive, low bandwidth, but they're very easy to put on chips, especially as you're going through the fab and uh, wanting to measure your components during the processes. You can see here's an example. Grader really is a diffraction grading. And you can see here we have some loss. These are higher losses, but typically you have structures where you're kind of canceling this out through uh, a couple of different uh, structures, uh, so you can still test uh, your components. Uh, again, easy alignment, wafer level, easy wafer level measurement. You can put them in 2D array, a lot of potential there. Now, there are different waveguides that you have in your process, so it's important to really design these to get the most out of your coupling, uh, wavelength dependencies, et cetera. And so it really does require co-process and co-design to do these. Now, a, a, a way to achieve lower coupling loss is edge coupling. Now, edge coupling, uh, it has the disadvantage 
of, uh, of having very poor alignment tolerances. This is again going back to submicron. Uh, you can get efficient coupling in the SMF28, but only if you uh, really go in and remove uh, some of the substrate materials and other places with high index where the parasitics are uh, ending up increasing loss. Uh, it's edge technique, so lower channel density overall, but people do fibers and they're uh, coming up with a lot of different methods to try and increase the density. And uh, sometimes you need uh, edge preparation. You can't just, you know, have a mechanical saw. It's got to be smooth. And uh, so there's some, uh, the way you do the etching or the polishing. And you may have to have some ledges or other sort of uh, support structures in order to uh, help uh, with the uh, packaging part. Uh, it is more difficult to test uh, in line, uh, but we have been doing this. And one of the things you see here is picture on the lower left here. You can see there's a, uh, 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 this was an etched cavity, uh, pre-dicing cavity. And they were able to, through a prison, actually go in and, and, and do edge coupling measurements. It's, here we're showing some of the results. It's a little bit higher here, uh, but without uh, uh, optimization. But you can still go in and measure on wafers, and uh, it's kind of a preferred technique relative to the lower losses and some of the other aspects of the, uh, uh, of the grading. Now, I'd like to show a slide where you, you, you do some process development here to really get the losses down. And this is an example of co-process. And this is a slide taken, by the way, from Stefan Preble. About a year ago, he gave a talk here at the same uh, event, Exploring Methods, Challenges, and Solutions for Pick Packaging. And I recommend looking that up and, uh, and actually uh, going through that. So in this case, what we see in the, uh, in the upper left is a fiber coming in. This has been uh, attached uh, with epoxy, and it's coupling uh, to a, one of our uh, coupling structures. So we're going to take that coupling structure and see uh, uh, what it is, and it's kind of expanded here just below. And what you see is this pattern here is actually etched out silicon. So we go in underneath uh, the waveguide. It's going to be coupling to the fiber and we remove the uh, silicon, which is this high index material, and replace it with oxide. So you can see it's a little bit fuzzy, but this is the cross section here. Typically, you have to expand the mode in order to couple to the fiber, because the fiber is very large, and these, uh, these, these coupling structures are small. Here you see an on index material coming to sort of a, a point so that you can get this effect of the, uh, of, of, of the mode expansion. In this case, uh, uh, with all of the materials and just normal SM28, you can see we're 0.9 dB uh, per facet, and these are the kind of, you can even get the lower values in this, but it does take uh, the, this uh, enhanced processing. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about electronic packaging, because in order to do the photonic packaging, you have to have the underlayer of electronic packaging. And I think what's really needed is accessible places where you can go in and get access to this. Now, there's a lot of discussion nowadays about hybrid bonding and uh, these kind of techniques, uh, uh, two and a half D, uh, flip chip, dense bumping. These things uh, uh, typically uh, require uh, facilities, advanced facilities. And uh, one thing about uh, amphitonics is, is not only can you can design the pick, but you can design these coupling structures and uh, leverage the fact that we're in this Albany Nanotech facility, and they have a lot of these uh, capabilities that are resident there. Here you see a pick uh, that has been attached uh, to a passive interposer with waveguides, and there's also some 2.5D lasers that were flipped. We'll talk about that later. Here's some C4 pillars. These are going down to 25 micron pitch. And over here is hybrid bond. Of course, you can get five to one kind of micron pitches here. All of these uh, things, it's kind of a toolbox. It's available for advanced packaging. And particularly going back to the switches and other things, we're going to need these kind of techniques in order to have real 3D kind of co-package uh, optics. Now let's take a look at, at a more generic uh, capability. And this these are some processes on the left here that are available and accessible in our test assembly and packaging facility in Rochester. And you can see this is 300 millimeter wafer level. We also are, are modifying our facility to comprehend 200 millimeters and smaller wafers. Uh, you can see uh, we have uh, dicing, uh, lithography, uh, metallization, uh, bumping, uh, wafer probing. Uh, we have uh, these kind of processes are all just simply available. You can see there are a variety of different uh, uh, 
uh, seed layers or, or under layer materials, variety of different plating, copper, nickel. We have electroliths and electrolytic on wafer level. Now, at a chip level, we have a fiber attached. We talked about the single mode fiber uh, for edge coupling. We have fiber arrays ability, active alignment. We can do lenses. We can do other sorts of things. We have flip chip. Uh, for uh, uh, thermal compression bonding, die attach, uh, wire bonding, uh, metrology and test. And it's really important in any kind of these facilities to have a, 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 a very a good uh, a failure analysis lab and an ability to, to support all of the uh, optical uh, testing. So here we have co-process, co-design, general toolbox of things, anybody could come in and sort of put together a packaging flow. And maybe you have some ideas to reduce uh, photonic losses. You need some place where you could build structure, possibly on the pick, and then actually put them together in a package. So these kind of toolboxes are just fundamental to encouraging this kind of development. Some of the things that we're in the process of doing is microtransfer printing, laser uh, solder jetting, uh, photonic wire bonding, uh, laser uh, thermal compression bonding with uh, infrared alignment. So we're trying to get some advanced tools and make these things uh, generally available for uh, uh, innovators to come in. Now, uh, one thing that you need is just a, a, uh, a constant vehicle where you're doing development. And uh, this has been done with Stefan Preble at RIT. And we have the uh, AIM uh, Photonics uh, RIT, uh, what, what we call our reference packaging chip. So you can see there's a variety of different things, RF structures, uh, photonic wire bonds, uh, uh, structures, uh, micro optics, edge gratings, and different gratings. Uh, we have a whole bunch of different uh, parasitics to uh, measure things on the pads, flip chip structures, uh, edge couplers, uh, uh, different techniques. And every time this runs through, we'll typically remove something and uh, put a new structure in for development. So these kind of vehicles that run every MPW, we're constantly having new structures, and this serves as a vehicle to calibrate and bring up your packaging equipment, and at the same time serves as an innovation bin for you to continually expand your uh, capabilities. Now, you know, we were talking about 3D and integration to try and get speeds up. Uh, one aspect of that is possibly bringing the light source on chip. Or there's a variety of different techniques to bring uh, the signal on chip. First, there's the more conventional, which is you really have uh, the structure over here with the laser. You have the fiber coupling, and that's what we've been talking about is all these coupling techniques. Maybe you're doing this with free space optics. Uh, there's another, we mentioned uh, photonic wire bonds, kind of be 3D printing, and that, and that relaxes the alignment. We'll show you that in a little bit here. And 2.5D, uh, and where we're flipping devices like a uh, laser, fully uh, functional laser on chip. Hybrid coupons, where we're uh, uh, heterogeneously integrating a single crystal material and then processing that heterogeneous in the wafer and then wiring it up. Or monolithic, where you're heterally, epitaxially growing the layer. Now, this technique has uh, the, the far right here with the monolithic. This has the most, uh, the highest density, the most potential for uh, fully integration, but there are a lot of challenges here. Not quite ready for production yet. We take a look at 2.5D. Uh, this is a emerging thing for different foundries uh, to have this offering. And uh, this advantage is that you could bring different lasers in at different uh, wavelengths. And if you have the waveguides that are compatible, it brings an ability to bring a lot of different uh, uh, types of uh, light uh, on, 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 on chip. And then there's these other technologies. And AIM, we're really focusing on trying to get a variety of different uh, two and a half D lasers integrated uh, with our picks. And uh, so enabling different types of integration and working on the, uh, on the uh, heteroepitaxy. Now let's take a look at two and a half D and see what one of these structures might look like. There's, uh, we have something called an active interposer where we uh, have the, uh, the metals are actually underneath uh, the waveguides. In this case, what we have is a pick, a photonic integrated circuit, the metals are on top. Here we have to dig a cavity into the silicon, place the two and a half D laser, provide ways to solder, solder these we have ledges here, and the ledges are important because they enable you to step it off and line up the wave 
the mode of the uh, laser with the waveguides uh, on, on your wafer. And we mentioned photonic wire bonds. In this case, there's a, an ease of alignment. You, you can have a, a much larger gap here and you 3D print this polymer, uh, bringing it over to a waveguide. So this is uh, certainly a technology that uh, of interest. Uh, what kind of results can you get? Well, here's two and a half D laser. This is the laser in one of these cavities. You can see these steps here, uh, which uh, determine the vertical spacing. And then here you see the, uh, the loss, uh, coupling loss in dB uh, with as a function of uh, current, uh, as a function of the uh, current uh, density. So uh, optical power going up uh, and the loss are going down a little bit. So these are the kind of results. Now standardization is really important and these kinds of uh, available foundries, they, they really need to give you structures that, so everything doesn't have to be custom or everything doesn't have to be designed. So here we show some C4 bumps and uh, some C2 bumps uh, that are, sorry, that are uh, being provided up a main. You can get these uh, structures. So that can be part of your toolbox when you design your pick. You can also design these packaging structures and, and then we can go straight into uh, fabrication and uh, be able to flip these devices or attach fibers or, or whatever. We're trying to go after standards. This is UCIE 1.0. Here's a couple of the different standards that we're uh, trying to, to support here. So in summary, I think it's important that you uh, have an end-to-end -end capability of modifying the process in the photonic integrated circuit, as well as in your packaging and design them together and make it accessible so other innovative uh, uh, groups can have access to the kind of tooling that it's going to take to do this. And as we said, there's a lot of precision uh, alignment and other kind of steps that makes it difficult uh, for small boutique labs to do it. I think it's really important that we have uh, really good facilities that are accessible. So custom uh, development options, they have to be available. Here we have 300 millimeter wafer level heterogeneous integration for very uh, dense uh, bumping, uh, hybrid bonding uh, kind of aspects. Uh, that full suite of different steps uh, to provide for packaging. And this is a real bottleneck for people to really get things packaged. There's a lot of uh, packaging in the country that has gone offshore. We really want onshore uh, kind of capabilities. I think it's important to have a packaging chip. You use this routinely. You have a lot of these chips to bring up packaging processes uh, in, in the line and are constantly innovating, putting new structures. So every time you get new innovation. And uh, uh, we're, we're looking at different approaches to bring uh, light on the, on the picks. We have two and a half D and uh, a heteroepitaxy is the main focus we have. Uh, we're supporting uh, almost all of the optical coupling methods and uh, trying to enable uh, different uh, researchers to come in with some innovation ideas and also taking a look at uh, standards, trying to do what we can do uh, to have standards. So first, I'd just like to uh, acknowledge that uh, all this material is based on research sponsored by Air Force Research Lab under Ian Photonics. Uh, we have several collaborators that we work with. Stefan Preble is, uh, is an RIT and uh, uh, referenced him in the talk and showed some uh, material there. We're also working with Peter O'Brien at Tyndall Institute. And uh, I, I borrowed a slide from him and also gave him some references, very innovative photonic packaging uh, work there. And MIT, in this case, uh, Anuruda, uh, Anu uh, uh, borrowed some material from her on the whole uh, switch, uh, uh, the, the, the whole roadmap in order to improve uh, with co-package optics, uh, the switch speeds. Uh, so, so all, thank you very much. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much, David, for presenting on the challenges of PIC packaging. To everyone in the audience, if you haven't already, you can type your questions and comments into the Summit chat, and do not worry. If you have not been answered yet, you'll be reached via email at a later date. This session is hosted by us at Photonics Media, and we certainly hope you're enjoying the Integrated Photonics Summit. Thank you all so much for joining us.